Hi, don't mind this. I got a viciously attacked by a zombie on the way in. But I'm with Melissa Massey. Don't worry, Melissa, I don't have a, a hunger for brains yet. But uh, until that kicks in, you have got quite an interesting way to make rooms of the house or anybody who's decorating their house for the holidays, it being Halloween, uh, nice and easy ways to do that. How do we do that? Well, what you want to do is start with a variety of different size and style bottles or jars. You want to find different ingredients to put inside of them. You can find them at stores, like these little guys right here, or you can also do found items from nature, like this wonderful moss and sticks that I picked up from the ground this morning. So the most common household item that you can find is a peanut butter jar. The other things that you can find around your home would be paper bags, coffee filters, you can either purchase tags or you can make tags out of the same paper bags. For the lids, what we use is everyday paper bags from the grocery store, coffee filters, and lunch bags. These are a little bit thinner than the grocery store paper bags, so they're easier to wrap around the lid of the jar. So there's two ways that you can distress the tops once you put them on your bottles. You can have them pre-painted and put them over the lid and then just tear off the excess or cut off the excess and if it's not long enough you can leave that extra length and paint it in or you can put it on and then paint the whole thing after you've attached it. So first what you need to do is attach the paper to the lid. You can do this either with a hot glue gun or if no power is available or if you have youngsters that want to do this, you can use a glue stick liberally. This works especially well with the coffee filters. If I tend to double layer because if there's any wording on the lid or pattern such as this one, it will block the words and pattern from showing through because sometimes it can even show through the light wash of paint that we put on. Next thing you want to do is take a little bit of paint, any type of paint will do, this is watercolor, and you just apply it liberally. It is mixed with water so it is not a solid brown, it's a wash. You can also use products like shoe polish and coffee and tea. For the coffee and tea, it tends to work better if you soak the paper and then let it dry out and wrap it with the other method that I showed earlier. So for this one I've decided I want to use raffia. And the nice part about this is if you attach it along the edge of the lid and not along between the lid and the jar, you can still unscrew the lid. So I'm going to Hold this down. This works well when it's wet, but you have to hold it with your finger because like a tissue, it will tear where it wants to. And by placing your finger above it and holding firmly, you're preventing it from tearing it a place that you don't want it to. The other thing that you can do is you can go over this with a darker color and distress the edges, maybe a little dark brown or even some black depending on whether the lights in your haunted area are um, very dim. The black won't show th as being extremely bold but instead will just accent the edges and the lines. This particular jar I felt would be appropriate to make some eyeball jelly. To do this I'm going to take some hair gel. You can also use nice thick hand sanitizing gel. I may have to scoop this out with my fingers. I think I shall. Now for the eyeballs, they usually come in a bag and they tend to all be the same color. Could be red, could be blue. You could use these large ones. They also have these little bouncy ball ones that are rather adorable. One thing you can do when they're all one color is you can take fingernail polish. Oop, it rolled away. We'll just have Scorpion hold it, or Magic Marker. Now I've painted this one halfway, so you can see I used a yellow fingernail polish and I changed it just enough that it looks a little bit different. And that one I accented with some green marker over the red, and this one I used a light blue marker. 
changed it just a little, but if you use fingernail polish that have different colors like blue and green, it changes the color of the eye dramatically. You could also use gelatin, so different colors could come into play. Regular food jello. Ooh, this is looking pretty creepy. And if you have one of those nice little stands that has a light underneath, you can illuminate it. Some people actually mix glow stick material in with it. I love how the eyes are floating in midair. It's a nice effect. I like how they're kind of just floating there. And you could always make a tag or a label. This was a larger jar. I didn't have quite enough jelly to fill that jar because that was originally going to make my eyeball jelly jar. There. <laughs> so what if we wanted to add a little sludge at the bottom? Well, we've got some water here. That looks okay, especially when the red dye runs into it. But now, let's add a little bit of soy sauce. Ooh, isn't that nasty? There we go. Now that looks wonderful. Looks like something you want in your pantry. Mmm, whatever this is. <laughs> now that soy sauce is also inside of my snake venom. Which a lot of people mistake for a bottle of maple syrup. So if you look around your home, I'm sure you can find lots of things that you can put inside of jars and bottles so that you can haunt your home and terrify your family.